This is the second of a series of three videos on isosceles triangles. In this video, we're going to look at a couple of example problems. And this is the problem that you might be given. It might just be asked to solve for x. And the first thing we want to notice on this problem is, is that we know that the sum of angles of a triangle equal 180, right? So the three angles add up to 180. And we have two angles. So we can add these two angles up, 64 and 58. 12, carrier 1, 11, 12, so that's 122. And then the third angle has to add up to 180, so we can go 180 minus 122. Then that's 7, 0, 10, that's 8, that's 58 degrees. And the key to this problem is we can do that even if we don't yet know how we're going to solve this problem. If you're ever given two angles of a triangle, you can always find the third. In this case, we know that we notice that these two angles are equal. If the two angles are equal, that means the sides opposite are equal. So be very careful here. This is the isosceles triangle converse. Um, so if we have two angles that are equal, then the sides opposite are equal. And this is just directly from the last video. If the two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite are congruent. So then we know that 45 has to equal to 2x plus 5, because the definition of congruent sides are that sides are equal in length. So now we simply subtract 5 from both sides and divide by 2, so we get x is 20. And that's what we would know. We could always check our work to make sure if we plug this back in, we get 2 times 20 plus 5, which is 45, which is exactly what the theorem says. Let's look at another example. In this example, we're given that the two angles are equal as part of the problem. And so here, what you have to do is make sure you know which sides are equal. We have three sides. Um, the key is, is that the sides opposite the equal angles are opposite. So here are the equal angles, here and here. So this side, the side opposite, and the side opposite are equal. So this side and this side are equal. Once you know they're equal, then it's just simple algebra, right? You just go 18 is equal to 4x minus 6. Um, you add 6 to both sides. 4x is, oh, that's 24, and x is 6. Let's do one more example. In this example, we have two parallel lines and we have a triangle form. This one's a little bit trickier. If we think about this, remember if we have two um, parallel lines and they're crossed by a transversal, that means that alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. Right? So there and there. So if we look at that here, if we look at this angle right here and this angle right here, you can see that those are alternate interior angles. Let's draw that out again. It's just this, and we don't use this side right here. We know that this angle and this angle are angle, so that angle right there is 90 minus x. Now if we look at this, now we look at this line here, we have a parallel line and a parallel line, so we know that this angle and this angle are also altered interior angles. Let me draw that out real quick. Right, you have these two lines and this line here. This angle and this angle are going to be alternate interior angles. Which means this right here is going to be 2x. At this point, if you want to, you can just draw your triangle over again, or you can just read it from this. It doesn't necessarily matter. What I know here is I have a triangle. I know this side is equal to this side. I know that this is 90 minus x, and this is 2x. I know that if two sides are equal, then the two, uh, two sides of a triangle are equal, then the two angles are equal. Right? That's the isosceles triangle theorem. So I know that 90 minus x is 2x, and now it's just algebra. I'm going to add x to both sides, and then I get 90 is equal to 3x, and x is 30. And those are some three examples. In the following video, we do the proof of the isosceles triangle theorem.